Uh, so today we're going to be doing a good shape lecture, um, but surprisingly it's not going to have a lot of the shapes you're familiar with, right? It's not going to have like a panuki or things like that. Uh, this is actually mainly from chapter one of uh, the Making Good Shape book by uh, Richard Bozulich. Um, and so I used a lot of the examples and talked about what it was. And the first chapter is about uh, stones, uh, ghost uh, efficiency efficiency of stones um so what i have here is uh good shapes are the building blocks of your groups understanding and recognizing them are important to becoming a strong player they'll help you build good intuition while bad shapes will ruin your game there are two aspects to keep in mind when thinking about shape one is to strive to make good shape and the other is to spoil your opponent uh one of the first examples that we can look at is uh, older Joseki. Normally we don't see this uh, diagonal anymore, but in this case, uh, this made a good example. So once we have white on this spot here, uh, white's in a bad position for black and a great position for white, because now we can hit the head of two stones and it makes this awkward situation where white is in this perfect position. So now, when we look at black, if black was to answer what would I think is a very normal response, uh, we come out with a dumpling shape. Uh, essentially what this is, or dumpling shape, or stones, are stones that don't really project any influence, nor are they making any territory. And so we can see that this shape looks silly, right? It looks like these stones are just useless doing nothing. Um, and so this is a, what's considered a bad shape. So in order to not make this bad shape, we would usually play something like this. And yes, white can connect under now. Um, but uh, what happens is we look at our stones. Our stones are projecting a lot of influence and potentially making lots of territory. So this compromise is much better to play this than to play bad shape here. Um, because now we're just kind of wasting moves. Uh, so this was one of the first examples of dumpling shape. Uh, we're going to look at another one. So this is the point where, um, you know, black kind of makes a net. Now this net doesn't work because white's going to be able to get out. But even if white can get out, we can see that we can uh, squeeze these white stones. Atari, right? And if white plays here, then black would kill. So then white kills this stone, but we can now squeeze and Atari this. So now once again, we have this dumpling shape. Uh, you can see that white, all these stones here look really clumped up and silly because none of them are making any territory, nor are they making outside influence. Um, maybe you could argue that these stones are because they have some, but uh, these stones look like just wasted moves. Um, so this is considered very bad shape. Uh, if we end up in this situation, then we should generally feel bad or we should feel that something went wrong and we're not using our stones efficiently. Uh, so that was one of the first shapes I uh, discussed in the book. So now we're going to move on to the next. Um, this pincer, you know, obviously the order is wrong while I was placing the stones, but if white was to approach here and black was to pincer, uh, this is a very common move. White bulges out, and now black has this nice Atari. So now we have two options again, just like the last one. And I think in the beginning, when we're playing, we don't want to lose stones. And so, well, most of us, I think, at least uh, in the beginning, would connect. And so when we connect, we make our second bad shape, which is something you might, you know, almost everybody is familiar with, which is the empty triangle. Uh, empty triangles are generally heavy, meaning that they don't have much potential to make eyes, and they're going to usually be attacked. And so the shape is generally bad. Uh, there's many other reasons why you could say an empty triangle is bad or inefficient. Uh, but we can see that if we answer this way, then black got the best out of these exchanges. Uh, if, let's say, you know, white tried making some territory, uh, some eyes here, it wouldn't exactly work, right? We can see that um, white isn't going to have an easy time of making eye shape. So this uh, shape is very efficient, uh, inefficient and heavy. Um, so instead, if we were to take this white stone and place it here, this one jump now makes the difference. Uh, this is something I say to my students all the time. 
where if they have the notion or idea of thinking they should make an empty triangle, instead consider uh, reading out the one jump to see if it works. Because this now is much more efficient, right? If uh, black was to try and play kind of the same similar moves, uh, white's already looking at one possible eye shape and another, right? We can see that white can uh, possibly make two. So this is why one reason why empty triangles are bad. I think you guys are all kind of aware of that, but it was a good example, and I really like to see it. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the other move in this uh, uh, variation. So instead of playing this move, uh, we can consider playing this, which Ataris, it allows black to take, but then you get another Atari. And so now we have this nice outside influence, um, and we can get a Romeo-Juliet split, breaking a knight's move. And now this is considered good shape. Uh, when we compare it to the empty triangle, this one has quite a lot of influence going this way and has broken up and made some weaknesses all over for black. So we compare the two, uh, and this shape is far superior, right? It's very good shape. So avoiding the empty triangle uh, was the key here. Um, so allowing yourself to get sac um, sacrifice the stone, allowing yourself to get killed, but a lot but opening up uh, chances to Atari allows you to make this good shape. This is playing very uh, lightly. Playing lightly means that you're willing to sacrifice, right, to, to get a good shape on the outside. So this was a really nice example. Uh, one other thing that's not discussed in the book is you could make a co. Um, this could become a co fight, um, but obviously I think this is much better. So I'm gonna move on to the next example. Um, so here we have a nice example of white trying to escape. So if black was to cap white and white jumps out, um, black kind of has two options. The first one and the better one is uh, to stand up. Because now when white comes out, you can now hit this weakness. And this kind of cripples white. Um, and so now if white has to make an empty triangle here, you can see how inefficient this shape is. It looks really bad. Uh, white doesn't have eye space. Black is on the perfect points to break the eyes. And white is just struggling. So white's not making any points or influence at the moment. Meaning these are really bad stones. Um, if we were to take a different order, and let's say we played here as black first. Well now, once white plays this, and black comes out, white can now one jump. And so this looks like a much better shape for white. Once again, proving that when we have the notion to make an empty triangle, we should consider the one jump. Uh, so in this case, this would be yeah far better for white to avoid the empty triangle. All right, so now we'll move on to the next concept. We've done dumpling shapes, empty triangles. So now we're moving on to the idea of heavy stones. Um, heavy stones and what I would call weak groups are very, very bad and go. Heavy stones um, are groups that can't make eye shape easily and they tend to get attacked, which forces them to make very little territory or influence. So what I see here is this white group is fairly weak because it's surrounded by black. And if black gets one more move to peep here, we can see that white, you know, uh, is if gets cut off, it's going to die, right? And so it's going to usually connect against this peep. But when we do, one, we've just made an empty triangle. And two, um, black will now continue to harass the eye shapes, right? Breaking the tiger's mouth. This is a very good way to break eye shape. Um, so as white runs away, black will now corral white around, will uh, guide white around. And so black can make points while attacking this white group. The idea isn't necessary to kill this white group, but it's to harass it enough to, um, you know, guide it into a position where it's really not making too many points. Um, all it is doing right now is running away. And while it is, black continues to make points on both sides. So this would be a really good result for black. And it kind of shows us why we should, you know, protect our weakness, right? We shouldn't have weak groups. If we allow to have ourselves to have weak groups and uh, allow them to become heavy, they become burdens. All right. Let's get to this one. 
So here we have another example. Um, so we see white's slightly surrounded by black here. And so if black hits the head of two stones, now white really has to come out, right? And so if it has to make this empty triangle, it's already a pretty ugly shape. And black's already on the point that's breaking the tiger's mouth or the eye shape, right? And so our next move, we want to continue to make white heavy. So poking here to threaten this cut is a very strong way to go about it. Um, if white connects, then black can now um, save its group here. Because when you're attacking, you tend to leave yourself some weaknesses. So it's important to defend yourself just as much as continue the attack. Already, because black has gotten some exchanges here, black has benefited by making white into bad shape, right? Empty triangles and heavy shape. And so now we fix this weakness with a table shape. This is a very common shape uh, we see for fixing cutting points. Um, so if it continues, uh, we can push uh, white around a bit and just solidify our territory. And once white officially gets out, right, it's very difficult to attack white at this point. Now we move on to the big move. So once we get to something like this, this would be really successful. Uh, yes, black isn't killing white, right? White and black is attacking white. But the goal isn't to kill, right? Once again, it's just to kind of harass white while you make points. That's the key to uh, becoming a stronger player and learning how to attack properly. So now we're going to talk about uh, thickness. Uh, like I said, we've talked about dumpling shape, empty triangles, heavy stones, and now we'll talk about thickness. Uh, thickness is a position that has very few to no defects. Uh, they can't be attacked easily, and they work as good bases to attack from. Uh, there's general rules with thickness. There's four main principles with it. And a lot of players struggle with this. And so it's very important to take these rules to heart. Um, and we can look at a bunch of examples with how to use it. Uh, first one is don't approach thickness too closely. Uh, we can see this by when black plays something like this far. Uh, this allows white to come back and attack. So when white attacks, black really only has like one way to go. And so does white. White can continue to harass black. And once when we get to the point where it's hard to kind of seal in black or, you know, continue to attack it, we'll use our strength that we got to now attack something else. So if we start attacking this group, black has to kind of bunker down to live. And now you can see that white has kind of built up a moyo here and has some stones still to attack. There's still some moves we can make. Um, and so by using our thickness, we essentially were able to attack. Um, and that's one of the other principles. Um, don't use thickness to make territory. Instead, use thickness to attack. So uh, the first rule was don't approach thickness too close because it's just going to get you in trouble. You're generally going to get cut off from your group, and then you're going to get beat up. Uh, so the right move in this position, if it was Black's turn, is to play something like this. This is much closer to your stones. It's going to be harder for white to cut you apart. Um, and so this is really nice for black. Not only is it um, a nice connection, obviously, with its corner, but it is limiting white. So white should, with thickness, strive to make more than a five space extension. So the further, the better. In this case, this only allows white to make a four space invention. Um, Actually, one. Well, if I count it from the top, it's uh, it's about four. So this is really limited. Um, and of course, if black hits on top, now we can see that white got less, significantly less, only three. Um, so this is bad for white because white is trying to use its thickness to make territory. Um, so this breaks one of the principles. Uh, and this well, obviously follows a good principle, right? Don't approach too closely. Instead, just limit the influence from a safe distance. Um, so then, let's see. So finally, uh, at least in this position, we can talk about what if it was white's turn, right? Um, so if it was white, 
we want to extend it as far as possible from thickness. Um, so this extension right here is very far apart. Uh, it's definitely more than five spaces. And so when black backs off or kicks or anything in that nature, uh, white can now uh, come back to start making a large amount of points. Uh, and even then, you know, you might argue, well, you said don't use thickness to make points, right? But this is such a large gap that it kind of invites black in, uh, which is good for you because, you know, you might be scared, oh, I'm, I'm losing this territory. But in reality, you have such an opportunity to attack these stones. Um, and so once again, you can use your thickness to attack. So we gen generally tend to make these large extensions from our thickness. Because once black comes in here, we have all the advantage of attacking it. Uh, and if they never come in, right, then we have the advantage of making the points. So, uh, even though I didn't go through all four principles with this one example, I have some more examples. But I'm just going to say out loud what they are uh, very quickly. So, don't approach thickness too closely. Don't use thickness to make territory. Use thickness to attack. And always drive your opponents in the direction of your thickness. If this group can't be killed easily, if it has very few weaknesses or defects, then we don't have to worry about pushing black into this group because we don't have to worry about this group's safety. That's the key. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next example. All right. So now we have um, white having a large thickness on the top. Um, we have two directions where we can attack and move from. Um, and so which direction should black attack? Uh, does anyone want to try and answer? Um, I think black should probably attack at A. A. Um, well, let's talk about white. What if it was white's turn to attack black? Um, in that case, I think they should also attack at A. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's very good. Um, so in the book, of course, it first looks over the wrong answer and explains why. So with this answer, uh, if white was to try and make territory with its thickness, which is breaking a principle, uh, this allows black to kind of make a base very easily. And if white continues to try and make this um, territory or attack this group, uh, black is definitely going to easily be able to make life here. And so this side of the board, which I think was much larger, is now uh, squandered, right, if black lives here. So what we should do is follow the principles, just like you said, Pico, is to drive our opponents to our thickness and to use our thickness for attacking instead of making territory. So once we play A here and we play, um, black makes its two space base, when white attacks here, you can see that black is still under quite a lot of pressure. It doesn't have that large slide it used to, right? And so it's still in quite a lot of danger. And as it tries to live, we'll be able to make a lot of thickness that's gonna help us for the rest of the board, right? If As if black's trying to live here, we can now make quite a lot of points down here, right? This is becoming huge. Um, so this follows the principles 100%. It's a good example. Good job, Pico. Um, so yeah, let's just look at the next example. So that's thickness, which is uh, very important to learn how to use. If you remember the four principles, uh, you know, it would, I think it will tend to make you a lot stronger of a Go player. Um, let's move on to the next one. So this is one more example of thickness here. And so we have both A and B. Uh, I think you get the picture, so I'll just explain both of them very quickly. Um, but white right here is thick, considering that white has lots of eye potential, and it's very hard for black to kind of attack this without white living very easily. So this is what you would call a thick shape. And this looks vastly different from the other ones. The other ones we had like big walls, right? Um, but this one isn't the biggest wall. It's only, you know, four stone wall. Um, so this looks different, but this would still be considered thick because, like I said, white has very little defects here. So now, um, ideally, once again, we'll look at the wrong answer first, but 
we don't want to extend from this side. And the reason being is, is because once again, this is only about a four space extension. We want to at least go five or more. Um, once we make these small extensions, black has a very easy time of making us over concentrated and small. Uh, in the examples, you know, black plays this and it gets a little complicated and I can show you that. That's no problem. Uh, but even if we just made things very simple, um, I think you could see that white is kind of getting hemmed in here and it's pretty small. So I think we've already kind of failed in, you know, uh, using this to try and make the territory. Uh, but let's look at the example in the book. So white plays down here and black Ataris, they make some shape and white does create some Aji. But white has to come back to save these stones. And when black uh, um, Ataris and takes, now we see that in this example, um, black has made a lot of influence and potentially a lot of territory. So in this case, white uh, made two lines to actually this, yeah, probably possibly four or five, but this looks very small in comparison to what black got out of this. Black has a much superior looking uh, situation. You might argue, because my eye also catches that this looks like a dumpling, or what they call a, a, a bomber, right? A, I think, a, I don't know, B2 bomber, something like that. Um, but the even if it is a little clumpy, uh, this thickness and territory that it's generating is quite big. Uh, so now we'll compare it to how to use thickness, right? Which is to use it to attack. Um, and so we attack on this side. And if black plays something like this, now of course the book was made before AI, so this is kind of a retro Joseki. We could still use this one and come out with a similar result. Um, but we see that uh, black now doesn't have that thickness, right? It was this huge potential that black could make over here and this huge uh, influence and like it's pretty much all gone at this point um white just ended up taking a very stable base in some territory and black just got a simple corner um so we can see that you know, when we have thickness we usually want to use it to attack on the opposite side we don't want to extend to make a small amount of territory unless of course it was the first example where we were making like eight or nine lines of um of an extension all right i think uh, that was covered pretty uh deeply so let's look at the last example um so the last example about stone efficiency in good shape is sabaki the technique of sabaki um usually what this is is uh tends to be attaching to strong stones so these stones are already strong so it's safe to attach to them uh, it also entails uh playing lightly allowing you to sacrifice but to make good shape so when we look at this area this area is pretty big and very uh stable for white it looks very difficult if black was to play anything between these stones it looks hard uh, because black will probably become heavy and then attacked which would be good for white in this case though there's this attachment here and so once we create this cross cut uh, the idea is that we're not going to worry about any of these stone safety. What's going to happen is if white takes, we can we get all these free Ataris. And then we can play very lightly out here. Um, and so even if these stones die, we consider this um, a good um, a good invasion, I would say, because when white starts attacking these stones, we can use them as sacrifices. So if white was to play something like this, we can squeeze and you can see now that white has that dumpling shape. This shape is considered very bad because all these stones are, uh, you know, not providing influence or a lot of territory. And black on the other hand has tons of uh, influence that's gonna help them affect the whole board. Plus has successfully done a good job of reducing this area significantly. So, this is the term of Sabaki. There was quite a lot of examples for this one, um, but I ended up uh, only picking out this one because I really liked it.
Uh, that is pretty much the end of the lecture. Uh, I have some other questions we can go about if you guys want to answer some questions. Um, but I'm hoping this helps. Uh, we covered pretty much uh, dumpling shapes, empty triangles, heavy stones, thick stones, and we are missing over concentration. Um, so this is one example of over concentration to me. Uh, essentially, it, it's very similar to thickness where you have these stones and so generally you want to kind of build this moyo bigger and invite black in here so that way you can have the advantage of attacking it um, but if we play something like this we're only we're not even making five space extensions these are four space extensions and three uh, and so and we're very flat too and so this area is what's considered over concentrated which is essentially too much thickness or too many stones taking too little territory. Um, so that is mainly it. Those are the five uh, concepts I wanted to tackle in this lecture. Um, anybody have any thoughts on these? Uh, any experiences with uh, dumpling shapes, empty triangles? Well, yes. <laughs> right? I, I think I've seen a dumpling shape in one of my games, Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah I might yeah. have done that once. <laughs> so when we get to these dumpling shapes, um, you know, uh, feel bad, and then figure out why it happened, and you can you can contact me, and we can figure it out. But yeah, that's definitely one thing. Uh, same with empty triangles and so on and so forth. Um, I think. Terry says she's never made one. Um, I think we can end the lecture recording here. But, yeah, I think we can, we can end the recording here. Um, but we can go over some questions and uh, have some fun.